Hello and thanks very much for joining me. I'm Dean the Vaping Biker and today we're going to be looking at something that I've had for quite some time. Now I have had hold of this for a while because um, it was so popular or the tank aspect of this was so popular the first time round. I knew there was just going to be a wave of reviews of this the minute it came out and I wanted to use this for a little while. I wanted to make sure it did what it said on the tin not just initially but long term you know. I wanted to uh, make sure that I could carry it around in my pocket. I could throw it about the place and see how it stands up to sort of regular everyday use as you would use it uh, and also find out about the coils and how long they lasted and uh, be able to tell you a little bit more about that and hopefully that's what we've achieved so today we're going to be looking at the Zelos mod from Aspire as well as the Nautilus 2 tank so before we do any more let's go up close so we can check it out come on then so here we are with the Aspire Zelos kit in its box. Just going to take you through a quick sort of once over on the box. I have taken everything out of it already, but you do have the warning label on the front there. Thanks very much, regulation, for that bad boy. Um, we do have a little bit of marketing around the outside to the scratch and sniff down there on that bottom side. And underneath, you do have a bunch of information which you're more than able to uh, have a pause at and a read if you so want to. Now, then, if we take this out of the box, let's have a little look, see what we get inside. Obviously you have your mod and tank sitting in there in its kit form. You do have the user manual. Don't worry about the user manual being super thick. That does come in a whole bunch of different languages and, uh, and is actually, actually very, very simple to read. We've got a little thing that says about overfilling as well as your warranty card. So there's a bunch there that we can have a look at and a play with if you really want to. Now then in there we do have the USB cable. We have a wobbly camera. Hold on a second. Um, we also have a extra Delrin drip tip. We have the 0.7 coil and we have an extra glass and O-rings there. So uh, nice and easy. Everything all kept together. But uh, the, the tank actually comes pre-installed with a 0.12 coil, which I can show you in a second. Now, then, one of the things that you will be able to know, notice is the 0.7 does have the orange bands and the 1.2s do have a uh, um, a clearer band but uh, but yeah that's uh, that's something that we can look at in a second now then if I take open the uh, the packaging for just the tank if you buy it by itself like I say in the kit you do get this tank uh, in the kit but this is just in case you want to buy the uh, tank on its own same sorts of warning labels going on uh, inside we have the tank and the same extras that you have with the kit now then if we break open the tank for a second just so I can show you something about the uh, about the coil when you do look at changing this out you do have to remove the glass which I think blows to be honest with you I think in this day and age having to remove the glass is just a pain in the bum when you have to change your coil out so uh, yeah I would prefer to have seen that uh, not be the case but uh, yeah let's have a little look at this oh I think I mentioned that these were 1.2 I meant 1.8 1.8 being uh, in fact that should say there we go look 1.8 1.8 on this coil so to remove the coil you have to remove the glass then you just unscrew the coil pop in your other one and you can see that this one does have the clear uh, o-ring on it pop in the other one and where you go once you've got that in there what I would suggest if this is a brand new coil is just pop a couple of drips of juice down the middle there now then one of the things that I want to show you is the difference in the uh, in the ball between the uh, 1.8 and the 0.7 you can see that the 0.7 does have a slightly larger bore down the inside this is the 0.7 that I brought across here you can see that this does have a little bit of a larger bore so this is meant for very very restricted lungs hits as opposed to having a uh, super tight mouth to lung so uh, yeah we are going to look at both of these when we go up top but once again just to get things back together again nice and easily all you have to do is you push your uh, your glass over the top and then you can screw on your top cap now one of the things I did ask Aspire here was are they going to be able to provide different shaped top caps because a lot of people think of this as a bit of a diving bell and uh, aren't, aren't overly made up with it but at uh, the, the moment they've got no plans to however they have taken the idea through to their uh, their uh, I don't know some department to uh, try and figure out if it's something worth doing or not but uh, yeah I mean they, it, this is what it is whilst they do come in a wide array of colours this is the shape that you will be dealing with now then if I can zoom out just a touchy booze there just like so 
What I want to do is, uh, oh, as well, by the way, obviously you can just remove the drip tip and pop your own drip tip in or pop in the black one that you do get in both the kit and the uh, and the um, the tank by itself. Underneath there, you do have a little bit of Nautilus 2 information as well. But uh, I just wanted to compare it against the Mini Nautilus of old. Back in the day, the Mini Nautilus was the bomb. It was just a great little tank. And you can see if I put them side by side here that um, whilst there are similarities, this one does have a shorter chimney. The top of the coil is kind of around about this kind of area, meaning that you're getting that vapour into your mouth sooner from the coil. So that helps with flavour as opposed to the olden days where it had a little bit further to travel up. Now, one of the things that the old one did have, obviously this tank was incredibly breakable, but, um, but you could, if you wanted to, buy a cage that went over the top. Unfortunately, something that you can't do with this one. Um, the other thing on here, the airflow on the old Nautilus Mini used to click into place so you'd have your four air hole choices and it would sort of have a little satisfying click to go into each one now the airflow control on this one is just a smooth kind of movement um, just to choose exactly where you want but uh, it's quite resistant um, because see if I can get that off there we go you can pull that off that o-ring underneath there does offer a certain amount of resistance and this little uh, gauge out in, in the inside of the AFC there does stop you overturning this, uh, this um, uh, AFC. So you can have a reasonable amount of control on it. Um, but it would have been nice if it had the old kind of clicky system going in, in my opinion. But uh, it does give you a whole bunch more options so you can really try and fine tune your vape. So on the widest setting... I'll talk to you about that in a moment when we go back up top or you've got all the way down to a very, very tiny mouth to lung, which works brilliantly with the 1.8 coil. Now, based on that, that is the uh, that is the, uh, the the tank in all its in all its glory. Now, then looking at the mod in the kit, this is the mod. I think it's very, very simple. I think it's straightforward and I like it. I think it's quite an elegant looking beast. Um, the the finish has, has, has stood up to quite a reasonable amount of wear from me over over the last few weeks and I think it's doing a grand job you can see that from a, a marketing point of view we've got a spire and zelos going on there or zelos however you pronounce it but uh, that's it otherwise it's quite a simple and straightforward modern looking mod in my opinion at the top there we do have a sprung 510 with a 23 millimeter distance from side to side there so once you put your 22 millimeter tanks on there or uh, or rdas let me just pop this a velocity v2 on here for a second and I can show you what that looks like um, you can see that it certainly doesn't overhang you may 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 get away with the 23 mil but because the mod curves in at the top there I think you'll be hard pushed so 22 maximum to uh, keep everything nice and tidy 24 mil will overhang ever such a small amount and then going into the uh, the buttons and the layout and all that sort of good stuff. Excuse the old uh, finger marks there. Oh, by the way, obviously there is uh, venting down the bottom here. No removable piece because you're not accessing the battery. It's uh, it's a permanent battery that's in there, so it is what it is. You do have your USB charger at the bottom there, and it maxes out at one amp charging, I believe. Now then, let's just break this open now. Five clicks. We'll lock it, and then it will uh, it will go off. It will lock it and then after a minute it will go off by itself and you'll have to turn on the whole thing again. But five clicks brings it back into life. Once you're in that situation, if you do want to access the menu, it's the plus and the minus button together. That allows us to go into watts voltage, so uh, just exactly what we're, sorry, a variable voltage, so you can control the voltage output as opposed to the wattage output. Bypass, so then you are using this essentially as an unregulated mod, and it's just going to use exactly what's going on with the battery. And then we've got temperature control in nickel, titanium, and stainless steel as well. So that gives us everything we need to worry about. What I'm going to go into is stainless steel for a moment, because there is a couple of things to show you with that as well if I zoom in just a touch more so you can get a really good look at this display I would like to have seen the display just a little bit larger to be honest with you but 
it is reasonably bright and uh, I've been able to see it in most conditions uh, certainly nothing that I've had any issues with now then when we are in this position if you do tilt the mod it doesn't have to be in in uh, temperature control mode but if you do tilt the mod ever so slightly we've got that brilliant little accelerometer not accelerometer gyroscope whatever it is that Aspire use to make sure that your display is always the right way up I do like that a lot but uh, once we are in this uh, this mode right here so we're in temperature mode what what I want to do is I want to change the power so I've got 450 Fahrenheit which does round Robin into Celsius mode so that was the plus and now we go into um, Celsius go through that and we're back into Fahrenheit again if I go back to set that back to the 450 where I like to vape on this device if I press the fire button and the minus button together what we get is the flashing 50 watts down the bottom here and that's what I've set the wattage at so you can set your wattage to however you see fit or whatever you like which I think is brilliant and some mods still don't do it in this day and age which I think is a shame this however does so everyone's a winner now then if you press the fire button and the plus button together we do lock everything so this isn't going to do anything at all but it will still fire and again to unlock it now if we do uh, let me just pop a uh, pop this uh, pop this RDA on here for a second because one of the things you have got on here is a stealth mode um, let's pop a new coil on there so it says 0.29 which is about right now if I do one two three quick clicks like so the screen goes off however we're still firing away and so that is in stealth mode so it's just not showing anything on that screen one two three gives us about the screen back again let's say if you do want to turn the device off five clicks and it goes into locked and then it will turn itself off so uh, yeah that's a nice and easy way of getting around the Zelos or Zelos mod but all in all I think it works rather rather well what I'm going to do is we're going to go up top and I'm going to show you uh, how it works with temperature control as well as what it's like in a mouse lung environment let's go so that was the up close with the zelos or zelos mod however you do pronounce it now uh, like i said i think looks wise i think it looks fantastic i've got the velocity v2 on there at the moment and the reason for that is we're going to be having a little play with the temperature control just to show you that it does work now what i've got on there at the moment is a couple of pretty damn dry coils there is a little bit is that going to focus you can see that they are getting a little bit on the furry side but um what we are doing is we're just vaping it dry to make sure I don't get any dry hits and uh, I've just been chain vaping that to make sure that's the case and we have very very little vapor coming out this is set to 50 watts as well as the 450 degrees and now what I'm going to do now is just a dump a bunch of juice on here just so we can see the difference and uh, show you that it is working once again just for confidence you saw how dry it was let's have another toot it is pulling out every little bit of juice it can find but I'm not worried in the slightest that it's going to uh, that it's going to dry hit on me at all so uh, yeah that's i think it works really really well the tester for that obviously is if we now saturate those coils again nice and quickly oh spray that again over there over we go right we should instantly have a vapor for days a little bit more on this side like so Get the old cap on the right way round and let's have a toot. There we go, back to full vapour production. So the temperature control absolutely, absolutely does work. Now I did, uh, I, I mean I put a dual coil in there that's running in at 0 0.28, 0 0.29, something like that. And um, it, it's doing a jolly good job. Obviously I do have that maxed out at the full 50 watts, which if you want massive battery life from it, I wouldn't recommend. I wouldn't recommend running any mod at sort of full beans because you're not gonna get the best battery life out of it because the board isn't really designed to be going hell for leather. However, what we're gonna do now 
is pop on the tank that I've got the 1.2 ohm coil in and we're going to have a little vape just get rid of a little bit of a dampness going off the top of that one hold on a second I'm going to put a monstrous 14 watts through this bad boy now Just giving it a couple of sucks just to help prime that coil. I'm going to do the full airflow to begin with. And that is, uh, that is a very, very loose mouth to lung. However, if I do take that airflow all the way down to the smallest hole, That is actually a really, really nice tasting, really nice mouth to lung experience. And unlike the other tanks that I've used over this week, I am getting hints of the RY4 that's coming through from this Kokomo, which I think is really, really nice. And so from a mouth to lung perspective, I think it works really, really well, much as the original did. I mean, the original um, Mini Nautilus was just, it was, it was something that people used. The perfect starter setup back in the day used to be a Mini Nautilus on top of an iStick 20, and that was just the bee's knees. Now, something like this will not only allow you to do your starter setup kind of, kind of vaping, but it will also allow you more variety when it comes to how how you want to tone your or turn your vaping as you kind of progress or decide you want a little bit more air have a very restricted lung hit that kind of thing you can do all of that with this tank and uh, full kit the 0.7 coil I think it does give you a very restricted uh, lung hit I think it's it's all right it's okay but to be honest with you I'm perfectly happy with this 1.8 coil going on here did I say 1.2 again <laughs> 1.8 coil that goes on in this bad boy because I think you can open it up and you can close it up as well and the, a fully open setting on here is far in excess of what the old mini Nautilus used to be able to do back in the day so all in all I think this is a cracking little setup I think it works really really well the temperature control on the mod works but if you're a new vapor and you just want to go into it in uh, in just straightforward wattage mode it's perfectly easy it's a very nice and easy to navigate menu system um, I think the flavor of the coils is good as we would expect from the one since they went to those 1.8 I think they're really really good um, I think all in all I think it's a little cracker now prices on official aspire.co.uk which is in the UK um, they are selling the kits for 49.99 which I don't think is a terrible price to be honest with you now then let me have a little look and see if I can see what the uh, what the uh, tank is doing by itself by itself the aspire Nautilus 2 is 19.99 so cheap as you like if you like a tank that has got a certain amount of variety that will allow you to mouth to lung as well as direct lung um, to some degree although very restricted and if you do get on with this styling because the styling is unfortunately something that has put a number of people off but to be honest I don't mind it I don't mind it at all I think it's okay but uh, yeah that's about it so straightforward I'd love to be able to give you lots of flourishes and embellishments and all that sort of stuff but it's a mod and it's a tank that works well you can carry it around with you all over the place the battery life is perfectly reasonable and uh, yeah all in all I think it's not too bad 50 quid for the kit not bad considering that you could have this set up for a very long time and uh, that's about all I've got to say thank you very much for watching I've been Dean the Vaping Biker let's get an exit clan going on this one shall we I will see you on the next one make sure you go and have it very large ta -da!